And greetings, friends. This is Roderick C. Meredith bringing you special insights on today's news and the good news of the world ahead. My friends, most of you know that the AIDS epidemic is spreading rapidly. It may be turning into the scourge of the century, a true devastation from God in many instances where people are turning away from His truths and His ways. Even children are increasingly getting AIDS, unfortunately, because of the sins of the parents. Many are orphaned because of the AIDS epidemic nowadays, and a recent clipping tells us that one new estimate by a group called the Orphan Project says that 55,000 kids in New York City alone will be orphaned by the turn of the century as the AIDS epidemic explodes exponentially. My friends, the turn of the century is just seven years from now or less, so we need to realize this thing is speeding up. Our crime rate is going through the ceiling, and many live in fear. This is called the land of the free and the home of the brave. But millions of Americans are afraid even to venture out into their own neighborhoods at night, and sometimes even in the daytime. Also, our national debt is going through the ceiling, and it is destined to destroy America as we know it, unless far more drastic measures are taken than the politicians are now proposing. You need to watch this national debt thing. Don't just listen to what the politicians are saying, my friends. Notice what they are doing, or rather not doing, about it. America is in big trouble. I mean big trouble, my friends. Meanwhile, a United States of Europe is rising up, which will not be friendly to us in the future, and we need to recognize that fact. And Islamic extremists in the Middle East are going to gain more and more power in the future, and they will cut off our oil supply eventually, and probably the oil supply of Europe as well, and may well be a key factor in provoking World War III. My friends, if there is a real God, then you would think that he and his word, the Bible, would say something about the traumatic events just ahead of us. And in truth, the Bible does. Many people think the Bible is just a collection of fairy tales. But the Bible speaks in specifics, my friends, about the time in which you and I live, and particularly the next 5 to 15 years from now. And 5 to 15 years is not way off somewhere. You'd better believe it. Jesus Christ, the true Christ of the Bible, is the greatest newscaster, or perhaps we should say news forecaster, who has ever existed. And a lot of us need to realize that. During the Second World War, Sir Winston Churchill stated, There is a great design and purpose being worked out here below. But only the Jesus Christ of the Bible can reveal to us that great purpose. So let's see what the real Jesus Christ said about the future of mankind. I want you to turn to your Bible. If you have a Bible handy, go and get it or blow the dust off your Bible if you haven't read it for a long time. It can be an exciting book, my friends. It opens up the whole panorama of what the future holds for us. Turn to your Bible. Turn to the famous Olivet Prophecy, Matthew 24. Matthew 24 in your Bible. These are exciting things right out of the Bible. You may not have realized. Matthew 24, and turn to verse 3. Now as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? You'll notice, my friends, that Jesus didn't say the end of the world. The world's not going to blow up. But the end of this age, the end of this 6,000-year period where God has allowed man to go his own ways under the influence of Satan the devil, that time is about up by the reckoning of almost anyone who watches chronology. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. That's the very first warning Jesus Christ gave. Don't be easily deceived. For, Jesus continued, verse 5, Many will come. Not a few false prophets, my friends. There are some weirdies going around the country now, but there are very few of them. Many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You need to recognize that. 
the many are going to be deceived, not the few. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, that's war, and kingdom, here's a different Greek word used, meaning alliances of nations. World war is spoken of, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. And so we need to recognize that at the end of this age, there's going to be more famine, loss of food, crop failures, alternating droughts and floods, and, he said, pestilences, which is just an old-fashioned word of saying disease epidemics. Disease epidemics and earthquakes are going to increase, which they certainly are. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then, Jesus said, they will deliver you the true Christians, up to tribulation, and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And so the true Christians are going to be hated for the sake of Jesus Christ, and then will be offended many, and will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Once again, it's the many false prophets. And because lawlessness... Notice this expression, my friends, lawlessness, disobeying the law of God. He's not talking about the traffic laws. He's talking about the laws of God, because people are disobeying the Ten Commandments wholesale in our society, and because so many people don't even believe in keeping them. They're not taught about them. Because the lawlessness abounds, the love of many will wax cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Not he who starts out, but he who endures to the end. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. Now, he didn't say everyone's going to be converted. He says this gospel has to be preached as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. That is, the end of this civilization as we know it, the end of this society. Let's get down to verse 21. For then, Jesus said, there will be great tribulation. And my friends, Jesus Christ is not talking about a little trouble over here in the Middle East somewhere. Let's get that straight. He is talking about great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world to this time. Much greater than World War I. Much, much greater than World War II. Much greater than the Holocaust that came on the Jews, believe it or not. It's the greatest time of trouble since the beginning of the world. Jesus said this, Until this time, no nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Just in the last 20 or 30 years, my friends, we have had the capacity to annihilate all human beings off this earth, and now many times over. So we need to realize that we are indeed living in the time of the end, the time that Jesus talked about, the time when cosmicide could in fact very easily occur if God does not intervene. Even back in the time of John F. Kennedy, our famous president, he made this statement, Together we shall save our planet, or together we shall perish in its flames. And that is true, my friends except we're not going to save it, God is going to have to save it. But unless there is a change, we're going to perish in the flames of this planet, and we need to understand the times in which we are living, because they are very meaningful, more meaningful than most of you recognize. You think that with the fall of the Soviet Union, everything is fine. And people are saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Let's turn to Luke chapter 21 now. Luke chapter 21 and Luke's account of this same famous Olivet prophecy. Luke 21 and verse 7. And they asked Jesus, saying, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to take place? And he said, Take heed that you do not be deceived for many. Once again, Luke remembers it's the many false prophets who are going to come. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he. He didn't say they would say they are he, but they will say that Jesus is the Christ and deceive many using the name Christian. 
and the time is drawn near, therefore do not go after them. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. And so Luke continues to speak about war and world war, earthquakes, famines, pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But then he says in verse 20, notice here verse 20, But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then you know that its desolation is near. That's a specific sign we can watch for. Not just a couple of armies, but surrounded by armies. Then let those in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, Jesus said, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. The days of vengeance, when all things which are written may be fulfilled. This is not some little thing. This is the climax, the culmination of every major prophecy in the Bible that speaks of the time of the end. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And so, my friends, there is great distress in the land. And we need to recognize God here is talking about a land and a people. This is not some little scattered church, not the little flock Jesus talked about. This is a national phase of this coming great tribulation falling upon the peoples of Israel and Judah. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. Tremendous heavenly intervention. And in verse 27, Jesus said, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And so, my friends, these events lead right up to the second coming of Jesus Christ as King of kings and Lord of lords. This is an awesome time, an exciting time, a dramatic time just ahead of us. We need to recognize the time in which we're living and watch world events, as Jesus tells us to, in fact, later on in this same prophecy. My friends, if you would like in greater detail these prophecies, if you would like to really understand them in a written form, then write or call today for our free booklet sent to you absolutely free and without obligation. It's entitled, God's Intervention in World Affairs. Call right now our toll-free number, 1-800-959-1641. I'll repeat that. Go and get a pen or pencil and write it down. 1-800-959-1641. This is absolutely free. No charge or obligation for this booklet. If you wish, you can write me to get it. Write Rod Meredith, R-O-D, like a fishing rod. Rod Meredith, Box 5500. That is Box 5500, Glendora, California, 91740. Write or call today before you forget it. And now let's go on into the prophecies that tell about this dramatic time that is just ahead of us in human history. Let's turn back to the Old Testament now for a moment. Prophecies that Jesus was talking about when he said all these things will be fulfilled and this prophecy contains some of these things that Jesus was in fact talking about. Jeremiah chapter 30 Jeremiah chapter 30, and let's begin here in verse 1. Get your Bible. Understand the exciting events that are described in detail in your Bible. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Eternal, saying, Thus speaks the Eternal God of Israel, saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, says the Eternal, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah. Now, I would like to pause right here, my friends, and describe to you the fact that there are two different nations spoken of. Two whole books of your Bible, in fact, about four, First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, talk about Israel and Judah. And the first time the word Jew is mentioned in the Bible is in Second Kings 16, verse 6, and it is talking about Israel warring against the Jews. The Israelites were fighting the Jews. 
You see, there was the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah after they were divided. And the so-called lost ten tribes of Israel then disappeared from human history, but they are discovered today, and they are found today in northwest Europe, the British, the British Isles, and frankly, many of the English-speaking peoples of the earth, including the Canadians and the peoples of the United States of America. He is talking about us. And he says, I'm going to bring them back from captivity once again, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now notice verse 4. Now these are the words the Eternal spoke concerning Israel and Judah. For thus says the Eternal, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now and see whether man is ever in labor with child. Why do I see every man, not a woman, but a man, with his hands on his loins, like a woman in labor, and all faces turn to paleness? Why are men scared to death, so they're grabbing their loins in fear? Alas, God says, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble. This is the greatest time of trouble in human history." Now, my friends, there can't be two or three or five times like that. There's only one time, and we just read about it in Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21, and here we're reading about that same time again back in Jeremiah. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. This is Israel's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Eternal of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck, and will burst your bonds, bonds of slavery, that are going to be put on the British Commonwealth and American peoples. Foreigners shall no more enslave them, God says, but they shall serve the Eternal their God, and David their king, notice it, David the king, whom I will raise up for them, the resurrection from the dead, the time of the second coming of Christ just ahead of us. What an awesome time we're about to live into. A whole new world order, the real new world order, inaugurated by Jesus Christ of Nazareth as King of kings and Lord of lords. My friends, your whole world is going to change. Do you recognize that? A lot of you don't get it. You think, well, these preachers just talk about little Lord Jesus away in a manger, or sometimes they talk about the Christ on the cross, but you don't know about the Christ of the book of Revelation. You don't know about the true Christ who sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven and is ready to come back to this earth and shake this earth and return as King of kings and Lord of lords. And it's going to change everything around you. The radio you listen to now, the television programs you listen to, the movies you see, the books you read, the streets you drive on, believe it or not, everything is going to change. The kingdom of God, the coming government of God that Jesus talked about, is soon going to be set up on this earth, probably in the lifetimes of many of you. What will you be doing in that coming government of God? Turn now to Luke in the New Testament. Let's go back to this wonderful gospel of Luke and find out from Jesus' own words what many of us are going to be doing, in fact, in the kingdom of God if we are true Christians, if we are overcomers, if we will obey God and walk with God as we should. Notice Luke chapter 19 now and verse 11. Luke chapter 19 and verse 11. Now as they heard these things, he spoke another parable, because he was near Jerusalem, and because they thought, that is, the people thought, that the kingdom of God would appear immediately. They thought the kingdom of God was just about to be set up back then, and Jesus would kick out the Roman armies, and everything would be hunky-dory, as we say. And, of course, some people think that today. They think Christ's going to come tonight. Well, he's not going to come tonight, my friends, and he's not coming, going to come tomorrow night or the next night, frankly. God describes a series of events that have got to happen first, and those events are going to happen. It's not a lot of guesswork. We have to understand that. Therefore, he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So Christ went off to a far country, which is, of course, heaven. This parable, this is a parable here talking about this. So he called his ten servants and delivered to them ten minus, or the King James translation has it, ten pounds, and said to them, Do business till I come. 
And so it was when he returned, verse 15, having received the kingdom. Now, here's Christ coming back, having received his kingdom. He then commanded these servants to whom he'd given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. You see, specific responsibility over many cities. This man is going to be allowed to rule. This overcomer is going to be a king under Christ in the kingdom of God, because Christ will be king of kings. And the second came, saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, You also be over five cities. And so this man had the same basic reward, rule, government, in the world tomorrow. That is what is promised the true saints of God, an exciting time to look forward to indeed. Turning back to Luke chapter 22 now, let's turn to chapter 22 of the Gospel of Luke. And we find a little bit more about these prophecies. Jesus said to his disciples, the twelve apostles, uh, what they were going to be doing. He said, Luke 22 and verse 29, And I bestow upon you a kingdom, in other words, a government, opportunity to serve in the coming kingdom or government of God, just as my Father bestowed upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So the apostles are going to judge over entire nations, but nations on this earth, the twelve tribes of Israel. What an exciting time. David sitting on the throne again over all Israel. Under David, the twelve apostles sitting on thrones over each individual tribe. And under King David, uh, under the apostles, of course, the individual Christians ruling over cities here and there in the coming kingdom or government of God. This is what the kingdom of God is all about. This is what true salvation is all about, my friends, overcoming and qualifying for a place in God's coming government on this earth. Let's turn back to the book of Revelation, because Revelation talks even more about this very, very exciting time. Reading the prayer of the saints back here, Revelation 5, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9, The saints are pictured as saying, You are worthy to take the scroll, they say to Christ, and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. My friends, that is our calling, to reign on this earth under Jesus Christ as King of Kings. What a marvelous opportunity. We've got to learn God's character now. We've got to surrender to Jesus Christ now. We've got to give our life to the true Jesus Christ now in repentance, in baptism, receipt of the Holy Spirit, have His help, have Him living in us now so we are fit, so we can be qualified to rule in the coming government of God to be set up on this earth. This is real. This is exciting. This is wonderful. Notice now, my friends, notice chapter 2, verse 26. Revelation 2, verse 26, Jesus said, And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So the nations of this earth have to be ruled, and they have to be ruled powerfully at first, ruled with a rod of iron. As the potter's vessels shall they be broken in pieces, as I also received from my Father. And so the true saints are going to be given this wonderful, awesome opportunity. Why haven't you heard this before? Why haven't these prophecies of the Bible been brought out? You need to listen, my friends, to the World Ahead program. You'll get understanding here that, frankly, you cannot get any other place. Tune in each week at this same time for truly exciting prophecies of what are going to happen in the coming days and months and years ahead of you in your lifetime. These things are vital to your life. They're vital to your family, your friends. You need to know about them. So write us today if you would like more of this in print. 
Write or call now for our free booklet, God's Intervention in World Affairs. That booklet is entitled, God's Intervention in World Affairs. Call toll-free right now before you forget it, 1-800-959-1641. Call right now, my friends. Go to the phone. You'll enjoy this booklet. It's absolutely free and without obligation. It's exciting. 1-800-959-1641. Or send your letter to me. Write to Rod Meredith, Box 5500, Glendora, California. That is Rod Meredith. Rod with a fishing rod. Rod Meredith, Box 5500, Glendora, California, 91740. The World Ahead is sponsored by the Global Church of God. Write or call now for our free booklet, God's Intervention. And again, my friends, be sure to tune in every week at the same time, same station. This is a program that is going to be meaningful to your life. Very exciting, bringing you things that you will not learn anywhere else. Things about the true prophecies of the future. Events that are going to happen and affect your life dramatically and powerfully. And so until next time, this is Rod Meredith saying goodbye, friends.